the uh, gentleman from Iowa, Mr. King, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate this hearing and the witness's testimony. Um, I'd first um, turn to Mr. Israel and ask, you said that our patent system protection is less than it was 10 years ago, and I agree. Uh, could you identify why that is the case? Thank, thank you, Congressman. Uh, we've talked about a few of them this morning. As, as I noted, there's been some court cases that have made it extremely difficult and very unpredictable to get patents, for instance, in the software sector and the life sciences sector, and, and there's some, some work going on to examine that. Um, uh, if I could, I'm, I'm particularly interested in your view on the change that was made in patent law to, to shift from a first to invent to first to file. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted our patent protection? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's brought us in line with uh, global norms, but it's certainly put more pressure on, on small inventors to, um, uh, to, to demonstrate to the patent office that they, the, the validity and the strength of their, of their patent. I would say, in addition to that, a, a very big burden and challenge and obstacle that's been placed on small companies in particular is uh, the post-grant review, so kind of the after-the-fact challenge system that exists at PTO, that once you have a valid patent, as a, as a company or an inventor, you're pretty much, there's an open-ended ability for anyone to come forward from anywhere in the world, really, and challenge those patents almost endlessly. And we so see the scenario works out like this. If you're a garage or a home shop inventor, uh, you generate the idea, and then you don't have a very good system to go ahead and apply for the patent, and so the chance of a leak and a theft of that intellectual property being filed by a larger company that's got the network to do that happens more often than it did before. Mm -hmm. And then, even if you file, you're still subject to the litigation coming back at you from the other way. So the advantage of the large, the large operations right. that have the administrative network and the skill sets and disadvantages of small, would that be a fair analysis? We believe that to be true, that oftentimes you'll see small companies that have breakthrough technologies as soon as they're ready to go to market. They're targeted by larger competitors in the post-grant review process at the, at the Thank PTO. You. Thank you, Mr. Israel. And I turn to Mr. Cullen, and I noted that um, you said we need to help, um, for, help the, help the um, can they help them, China in particular, move from the counterfeit economy? And I, I like the phrase counterfeit economy. They have a substantial counterfeit economy. And, um, and there are a lot of small things along the way as I listen to this, but I didn't hear any big ideas. I heard a little law enforcement here. I've been over there to beat on the Chinese and uh, I talk to them about what are you actually doing? And they assure us that they're bringing civil actions against their pirate, the IP pirates that are active over there. And uh, I say, hey, that's fine. Uh, what happens? Well, we find them. And uh, then once you find them, who collects the money? Well, the government does. And they put it in their other pocket because a lot of those are government-owned companies. And I says, anybody getting any uh, criminal charges against them? Well, one. Is he in jail yet? No. Uh, or maybe not was more like the question. It wasn't a very answer. It wasn't a straight answer. So um, I'll, I'll bring it to this. Sitting there in, a, at, in the third city meeting in, in China, and it happened to have been in Beijing, it occurred to me that each one of those meetings the, the each was exactly the same script. And sometimes the, it isn't that inscrutable. It came to me that their business model was, we're going to steal your intellectual property, and then as a cost of doing business, part of their overhead is to wine and dine Americans that come over there to complain. But they never intend to do anything about it because they're getting rich off of the theft of our IP. In fact, it is a multi-billion dollar strategic effort to steal the creativity of America. And those numbers uh, range someplace between $250 billion a year and up to $600 billion a year, depending on whose estimates are there. Uh, so. From that uh, meeting sitting over there, I'm sure the Chinese hacked my email off my BlackBerry, but I wrote it sitting at the table, and it was this. Draft a bill that directs the U.S. Trade Representative to conduct a study to determine the value of intellectual property theft stolen by the Chinese and apply a duty to all Chinese products coming to America in an amount equivalent to recover that loss and plus an administrative fee and then distribute those proceeds to the rightful property rights owners. That's H.R. 1048. Now, I want to ask you, Mr. Cullen, do you believe your organization could support I'll let him a bill, such a bill? I'll let you hear it. When. Well, I appreciate that co uh, question, Congressman. And uh, creative approaches to these problems are what we need. Um, I certainly can't commit that we'll support the bill. Uh, more than happy to take a look at it. Uh, you know, we have a lot of engagement with China, uh, and I agree with you. This problem is so vast uh, that we need to see some tangible results. Uh, our companies, as 
Morgan reference, want to do business and access that market. Uh, but if we're having our intellectual property stolen, it puts our companies at great risk. So appreciate the creative approach, but I can't say we'll support the bill. I'd like to can. ask you and Mr. Reed to take this idea back to your people yes, and contact me with a response on this. And I'm happy to have a meeting and have a discussion to expand this further because it's gone too far. And Hollywood and Nashville didn't want to touch it 10 years ago. But now the president has this in his hand, so we need to get behind him and solve this problem. It's a, there's too much theft going on of IP, and it's time to do something about it. So I'd ask you to do that. Would you say yes, each of you gentlemen? We appreciate the opportunity to commit to it. Thank you. And let the record show that Mr. Reed did as well. He nodded his head and he smiled. I think he smiled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mr. King. And uh, rather than go through the closing statement that I had, just I'll, I'll just conclude with a real short one. Put me on that bill. <laughs> All right. Very good.